Apex Maniac listening to the elevator. I already mentioned this in the first layer, but if you go to the Rich Hits Me Hotel, there's a Hex Maniac there who says, Don't talk to me. If you do, I won't hear the elevator. This is obviously a really vague and ominous statement, and people think that this is connected to the Luminous City Ghost, or this might just straight up be her also. Uh, we don't know anything else of this, there's no other follow-up or anything for this, like everything else on here. And for now, it's just, yeah, weird, something that's possibly connected to other weird happenings of Hex Maniacs being weird, go figure. Message behind the train schedule board. I might have also mentioned this before, but if you go to the train station at Luminos and look behind the scheduling board, you'll find a secret message that says, I'm going to go look for help. Wait in the usual place. Again, obviously this is another really vague and ominous statement that could mean anything, and this is another thing that some people think might have a connection to the ghost girl, and again, we just have no other info on this or context or whatsoever. Maybe it's just a joke that didn't get translated well. Uh, who knows? Lumo City Glitch. This was a major glitch that could happen when the game first came out, and what would happen is that if you saved outside in the north and southern boulevards of Luno City, there was a chance that it could completely fuck up your game and prevent you from progressing anymore. They obviously released a patch soon after that fixed this, even if you were already stuck. But if you look now, you can see all kinds of posts of people worrying everybody to don't save outside of Lumino City. And there was even a support page from Nintendo's website on this. And yeah, it was this big major thing. It's probably one of the most major and infamous glitches in all of Pokemon. And what would happen too if you did is that it would cause everything to not load correctly, making Luminos look like this weird, creepy ghost town where. Everything's completely unfinished and almost kind of creepypasta-like, and I'm pretty sure it spawned a few of those, and you couldn't move at all and you were just stuck, you were hard-locked, you had to start a new file before the patch came out. And I guess with the online functionality gone, this is probably just the case again now for anybody who gets the game for the first time, so fuck that. And... Yeah, it's kind of creepy and scary, and even if it was fixed, I still don't say follow of Luminos off, like you know, superstition and fear, like, that's a big place, there's no way the game can handle it all so queenly, and it does make you wonder how they didn't catch this before releasing it, but just goes to show how rushed this game was. Sky Battles. Here's a forgotten little thing that was only in this game that, you know, is something that doesn't need to ever come back either of the way it was done, and... I'm sure everybody remembers these when they see them, but it's something that you never think of when you're playing the game until it comes up, being that in certain spots, there's a trainer who will look at you from across, like, all Pokemon 3D stadiums so I like in the show and be like, I challenge you to a sky battle, and there's nothing different from these, aside from the fact that it's in the sky, and you can only use flying types. So yeah, a lot of people probably skipped most of these, and... Yeah, not really a big deal, and sure, it made the flying idle animations look nicer, but the thing is, is that they don't change whether you're on the ground or the sky, so it's just kind of weird, it makes no difference either way, and with just how needless this was and how small and few in between they were, it's just another thing to make you realize, what was the point of this, and was there bigger plans for this before? Natural Objects. Here's something that nobody, <clears throat> excuse me, nobody really knew about, and more recently, it's become a thing that probably just about everybody knows about, though, because it turned into one of those phenomenons where everybody found it afterwards, and they're like, did you know about this weird thing in Pokemon X and Y? And now I'm about to explain it to you, because this is a really weird, obscure mechanic, no wonder it was so underground for a long time. Natural objects are when a regular object appears in the background during the battle screen. It's usually just a tree or a rock, and it, o it only has the possibility of appearing. There's like over a 50% chance that you won't see one at all. And if you use a move that targets multiple targets, 
there's a chance that it will break this natural object, giving you a berry or some sort of stone item. Not an evolution stone, just a held item. And yeah, uh, that, now let me get into more details of this, of why it's so obscure. For one, it's only in these games, of course. Two, there's only the chance that you will run into one. Three, once you do, you most likely won't even notice it's there just because it's so ordinary looking. You'll just think it's part of the background and think nothing of it. You won't notice it at all. Four, only attacks that target multiple opponents at once will hit them. Five, if you miss entirely, you'll miss the object too. Six, there's only a chance that you'll hit the object even if your attack does land. Yeah, you see why now these are so weird, and the items you get from them aren't really the biggest deals either, so... Yeah, just a really strange, obscure detail to put in these games that I guess is almost neat, but it's just so weird that you can't really compliment it much. OG Shiny Goat. This is a, just a small thing. This, as far as we know, is the only Pokemon to change its shiny color from beta to final game for whatever reason. It's the only one that we have footage of, and you can see the difference right here from the cutting room floor. I can just put a picture up here in. Yeah, just wonder why they changed it, and so late into development too. Strange Souvenir. This is one of the mysteries that actually was solved, because Sun and Moon came out. If you talk to this hiker NPC, he'll give you a regular item, and he says, This is from a far off region, it's not from here, Kanto, Johto, etc. And then he'll give you the strange souvenir. Of course, now we know that this is an Alolan item. However, at the time, this did absolutely nothing and still does, but the point is that nobody knew what it was from, and it could only be seen as hinting at a future generation, which of course it was. And yeah, it's just another weird, many mystery things that just piled up for these games until, like, later in. End of actual events. So what I mean by this is that this is the point where events were no longer a special thing in Pokemon. Before this, it was a big deal, mainly in the DS games and uh, Gen 3 also, kind of, but not spectacularly. When an offense mythical Pokemon was released, it was a big deal because it would open up this whole new area if you didn't achieve an action replay first, but that didn't work for all of them. And you would get a special item, and you would go and you would actually encounter the mythical Pokemon like you would a real legendary game and had this whole mini story and everything with NPCs. And, like, the coolest one for me was... RCS and HeartGold Soul Sulfur, because it took you to this whole new area that you can't reach otherwise. The Sinjo Ruins, and then you would go see RCS and it would start playing its battle theme, and you would get this PowerPoint presentation of real-life images. It's so fucking dramatic and cool-sounding, despite how stupid and little it is, and... No, that shit was awesome. Like, it really made it fucking worth waiting for and getting. And then this was the point where they started throwing that out the door now. Gen 6 maybe a little bit of event, but not really, but yeah, like mainly by this point just got more and more where it's just like, here is the legendary, goodbye, and you just talk to the dude in the Pokemon Center and that's it, they lost all their specialness and it was really lame and yeah, a lot of people had a problem with this. Now this did seem to be fixed a bit by Gen 8, but this is from a different format entirely where they had the DLC expansions, which basically replaced, you know, like, second versions of the game, and so yeah, obviously they have the better opportunity to do that, but for that period of time, where events were no longer the same and not meaningful, yeah, this is disappointing, and, you know, you could chalk it up again to the game being rushed, but, you know, this is content for stuff that came up after the game, so it's like, really, they couldn't polish anymore? That's a really big shame, and... Yeah, that's just one of the criticisms that people have of the 3D era on words. Why well, encounter the legendary bird ten times? I mentioned this again in the first layer when I was talking about the lack of legendaries, and yeah, this is just why. Who thought this was a good design choice? Just why? Nobody at any point thought 
notices too much we need to tone it down maybe make it like three times or once even or but no you have to encounter the ten birds ten times each one before you can catch it you can't catch it during those first ten times no because after that it'll settle down and go somewhere where you can actually face it but why why ten random encounters like i guess they want to extend the post game further because there's nothing to it but like I said last time, these are old legendary Pokemon that everybody already got forever ago, so nobody's gonna fucking bother to do that, and it's just gonna confuse and annoy players who don't know what's going on. Just why? Alright, that was a bit funny. Next, we're doing some really interesting thing in Deeper Water.